Hello everyone, Samantha here. I pray all is well with you. This is a Berean chat video and let us pray before I start. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We honor you. We worship you. We adore you. You are our all in all. Lord God, we love you because you first loved us. Father God, thank you for your mercy, your grace, your love, your compassion, for forgiveness. I ask that you forgive us for every sin that we've committed against you this day. Lord God, the sins we know of and the sins we don't know of. And thank you, Father God, for forgive forgiveness. And you promise, Lord God, that you are conforming us into the image of your dear son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God. You said if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank you for your blessed promises, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord God, that your word is life. And your word is a lamp unto our feet, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit that opens the eyes of our understanding, oh God. You open the eyes of our understanding. Lord God, you let your word become rhema to us, oh God. And Lord God, you have empowered us not to just be hearers of your word, but to be doers as well. You have equipped us and empowered us, oh God. Not only to read it, to receive it, but also to live it and believe it. That's why we can live it, because you've enabled us to believe it. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that even as we read and study what you would have us to read and study at this time, that you have already, in the spirit, we claim it brought forth a hundredfold from this seed, your word. And we thank you for it, oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that I declare it even now, as you place it on my heart, that we will live it out to your praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Oh yes, Lord, thank you. And share it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Beloved, God's beloved. Um, today, we're going to focus on Ephesians 1, 1, 4, part of 1, 4. And um, also going back to 1, 3, because um, 1, 4... Before Ephesians 1, 4, um, there's a colon. Um, attaching it to Ephesians 1, 3. Right? So, um, before I go into that um, further, I just want to say that, um, you know, there are times where, because this is Berean chat, right? And so, we'll talk about the word, but also some things that, the Lord, um, you know, has placed on our hearts. You can share it um, um, in the comments if you want. Um, because sometimes the Lord, he'll place different things on our heart as far as our method of study. Because there's no one way to study the word of God. Um, but there is one interpretation that's from the Lord. Um, and um, I know the Methodist... They will call that because of um, their endeavor to study the Bible. And so, um, with that being said, there are a lot of ways to study the Bible. And if you think about it, um, it makes so much sense because God has made us as human beings so diverse some of us are auditory, some of us are visual, some of us are kinesthetic, tactile. You know, we have different learning styles. And when you think about it as well, some people are unfortunately, you know, deaf. And, um, some, and you know, visual is very important for them. Some people are blind. 
they can't read, but there's tools and, um, you know, tools and devices available to help them read and study. And um, some of us, you know, we can hear and we can see. However, you know, how we may be wired in our brain, um, a certain method of studying something may not work for us. It could cause frustration and um, have us close the Bible. That's what the, that, that's what the devil wants us to do. So it's very important that each one of us go to God as an individual and say, Lord, show me how to study the word where I can get what you want me to get out of it. Uh, you made me, you created me, you know what's best for me. Let me not be locked into a way a certain individual does it like that's the only way. Um, I used to think like that, but then as I've grown in the Lord, he showed me that's very dangerous because if you impose how God has you study on someone else, it, it, could, it may not be for them and it could frustrate them. What I will, what I do advise is study, read it. I'm not going to tell you how to. I can give you suggestions and you can see if that works for you. If not, if it doesn't work, you know, go to God and ask God, what is the best way for you to study? Because some people, they study chapters at a time, books at a time, like a whole, maybe the whole book of Job. They can sit down and read that in one setting, whereas someone else they try to read that in one setting and they're going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. They're like, what in the world? I don't understand what's going on. It's too much information. I can't digest it. I feel confused. So, um, yeah, go to God and ask God, you know, for the Holy Spirit, his spirit to guide you and lead you in your studies. With that being said, I realize that one of the ways that Lord has me get a lot out of scripture, how he speaks to me is sometimes it's verse by verse um digging into a verse at a time um not to say that i won't read chapters at a time because i do um books at a time but as far as studying is concerned i realize sometimes i want to go through it so fast and the lord is like you need to slow down and you need to look at the words and you need to look at the punctuation marks because if not, you can take things out of context. And I'm sure I've done that on more occasions that I would, I mean, on more, uh, I, I, and I won't say that um, I hate to admit because I'm grateful to be able to admit it. I don't hate to admit that I've probably blown it several times, but I thank God that today's a new day and we always have an opportunity to, you know, um, learn from him and do things better as we grow in him and he teaches us so with that being said i'm not going to say all the time the lord is going to have me share one verse at a time or part of a verse and then go back in a in and as he attaches and show me i'm not going to say that's going to always be the case but if you're going to be watching berean chat please note that um I don't foresee the Lord having me rush through and just read and regurgitating information. So with that being said, today we're focusing on Ephesians 1, 4, of our state, as I stated in the beginning, and we're going to be looking at chosen. Now, um, the Lord had me go back to Ephesians 1, 3, because in a previous video, um, I focused on um, all spiritual blessings in heavenly Christ Jesus, that in heavenly places in Christ. How it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And I also mentioned how God kept speaking the word to me, we. And as I went through Ephesians 1, I understood because this is not just for one person. Now, we can claim it personally, but this is what he has done for us, the body of Christ, the church the church, right? The bride of Christ, we. So when I'm reading this and I'm and I, I'm reading and sharing this and we're studying this, please note that you, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, these promises are yours as well. 
this is not a, a isolated individual um, testimony. This is for all of us, what God has given us, right? So going back to Ephesians 1, 3, at the end of verse 3, there's a colon. And the Lord said, look up the colon, because I know you use colons, and I know you know what it means, but you can get a better understanding. So when I looked at a colon, because I always use it for following, like this is the follow. So if you said the following are, or the following is, and you can put a colon. But when I looked up the definition for colon, it says it can explain. So when you see a colon, whatever's coming after it, it can be explaining something, illustrating something, paraphrasing or expanding on the previous information before the colon. So when I looked up, so now let me go into verse four. So now going forward into verse four, I understand that it is attached to verse three about God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So it's expanding. It's going to illustrate the verses coming after. What are those spiritual blessings? So now, if you go back to the previous video, I mentioned some of the spiritual blessings. Those are spiritual blessings as well. But we know there is so much in God. There's so much that God has blessed us with. And as we read through the scriptures... We will see the manifold blessings that God has bestowed upon us. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's why it's so important to be in his word. Yeah, we can listen to a sermon. We can share with each other. But there is nothing like praying and getting into the word of God and saying, God, show me your ways. Show me your thoughts. Show me your promises because all your promises, God, are yea and amen. So all spiritual blessings, hallelujah. Those verses coming at those, the information coming after verse three lists some spiritual blessings. Now, I'm going to read um, verse four. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to read verse three and then I'm going to go on to verse four, okay? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, in love. According as, I looked up the word according, it's, according to is, is as stated or reported or recorded in a way that is based on something. It can also be directed by or required by someone, like rule or direction. So according to the Bible, Right? This is a, a, a rule or a direction or a promise according to the Bible. So, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ according as he. So, what are one of these spiritual blessings? Because it's according to this. According to this. This is how, this is one of the spiritual blessings. It's going to expand. There's a colon. This information here is giving us some more information about spiritual blessings. Right. I'm going to pause right there and take a moment to gather my thoughts. Okay. All right, God. Yeah. So, one of the spiritual blessings, thank you, Jesus, is that he have chosen us. Yes. We are chosen of God. Now, today, we're not going to go into chosen for what? We're going to, visit, we're, going to, we're going to talk about that in the next video because it's really meaty. But let's look at this chosen. So, I want to read some of the annotations that's in this Bible. 
which is the Thomas Nelson King James Study Bible, right? So, verse 1, 4, it says, The connecting thought linking verses 3 and 4 is this, Just as, according as, God has blessed believers with every spiritual blessings in Christ, so in like manner it was in or by him that he have chosen us. God never intended to bless man apart from Christ, right? God does reign on the just and the unjust. We know people have practical blessings. You know, um, we see people, they have jobs, they have food, they have clothing. But they may not have the ultimate, which is salvation, the main spiritual blessing, right? Jesus himself, having Jesus himself in salvation, a relationship with God. Right, and there's so much more in the salvation for lack of word package. Right? The gift, yes, the gift of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. All God does for men, he does through his son. For by Jesus all things were created. And anything that we see, the Bible says it it was created by him and for him. Right? When I upload the video, I want to put that scripture. So it says, um, beginning here and continuing through verses four, verse 14, Paul begins to elaborate on the very general God have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He specifically identifies nine of these spiritual blessings. Remember the colon in verse 3. And that colon is to explain, illustrate, paraphrase, or expand. The first promise that's listed here is God has chosen the believers. Now, when I look up chosen, there was, I looked it up on Bible Hub, um, and they got the help studies on there. And um, some of the definitions were picked out for myself when it comes to chose, choose, elect, select. Then it goes on to say real heart preference, real heart preference. Oh, we going somewhere with this. Thank you, Jesus. This was not some fly by night decision. This was not some fly by night choice. You know how we could go in the store and choose a, pe choose a pair of shoes and then realize, wait a minute, I don't want these shoes. I don't really like these shoes. These shoes are too tight. Sometimes we make rash decisions. Sometimes we make rash choices. We go to a restaurant. We may choose some food and decide, ew, will we get it on our plate? This is nasty. It don't taste right. It's disgusting. That's not the case with God. He made a real heart choice. This is his preference. He prefers us. This is not a spouse who decided that after they married you, they didn't want you anymore. This is not a friend who, after they see your flaws, decide that you're not a good friend because they saw a flaw. No, this is God who knows the beginning to the end. And he made a choice, a deliberate choice. We are his real heart preference, beloved. This is highly deliberate. A definite outcome as with the destination of divine selection for salvation. He has chosen us. That's one of the spiritual blessings. Before we did any good, he knew we would mess up time and time again. Every day we fall short. Every day we fall short to the glory of God. But in Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. And God did not make a mistake. He did not make a mistake when he sent Jesus to the cross. No, he did not. While there is breath in a person's body, where they are a living soul, there's always hope. He chose us. He sent Jesus to the cross. He knew we would not always get it right. But still... While we were yet sinners, the scripture says Christ died for us. 
Not when we got it right. Not when we did everything right. Not when we had all our ducks in a row. Not when we crossed all our T's and dot all our I's. He says, come as you are. Come. You may be a hot mess, but come. Because when I tell you, I don't, I don't really go for um, God bless this hot mess. I'm not a hot mess anymore. I can do some things that look a hot mess, but I am blessed. God, we are blessed. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings. We are chosen. You're not a hot mess. The devil is a liar. The scriptures does not call you a hot mess. You are blessed. And again, do we do some things that are like a hot mess? What I did is a hot mess. But I am not a hot mess. I am chosen. And I am blessed with all spiritual blessing. You have to declare for yourself. We. We. This is for us, right? This scripture, this says God has blessed us. So we. We are blessed. We are not a hot mess. We may do some things that are a hot mess, but we are blessed. So, moving on. So, God has chosen us. So, you know what? I'm not going to go into verse 5. But it's something that I need to address because even though there's so much more after the word chosen, um, there's so much more after the word chosen before you hit verse five, that in between. But there's still this connecting point. And what came to me was um, the predestination, which, like I said, we'll go into that deeper. But I want to address something as far as chosen and connection with that because somebody watching this may not know Jesus Christ and may say well God did not choose me that's not true that's not true sweetheart at any moment you can give your life to Jesus Christ wherever you are if you're in a church building, if you're on a train station, if you're in your bathroom, if you're in the kitchen, if you're listening to this right now, you can say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I want, a, I want a relationship with you, Jesus. I want a relationship with Father God. My sins have separated me from God. And you died for me, Jesus. You died for me. And you forgive me. And you accept me. And I will have a relationship with God. And when I leave this earth, I know I will be with Father God in heaven. Yes. Forgiven. Forgiven because I truly accept you, Jesus Christ. I know I cannot get to heaven on my own merit. I have no goodness apart from you, God. I blow it time and time again. I sin against myself. I sin against you, God. I sin against my fellow man. But Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins because I cannot pay the penalty for that. But you have already done it, Jesus. So I thank you. I received this free gift of salvation. Forgiveness, a relationship with God to Father, no longer separated, and heaven is my home. Whenever I leave this place or you come to take me from this place, when you come for us, the body of Christ, we can say that. However you word it, if you need a, a link to... um. Uh, sinner's prayer, because there's different ways to say it. But the most important thing is that you acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That he died for your sins. That you need forgiveness for your sins. That you are a guilty sinner. Right? And that only Jesus can save you. That you believe that he died and rose again. He died for your sins. He rose again. He is a living God. And you ask him to come into your heart. And you ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. There's so much more to learn. There's so much more to learn when we give our life to Jesus Christ. But once we give our life to him, we are gods. We belong to him. You are a child of God. You may mess up because no one gets it perfect. No one is. No one does everything right. But we grow in him. We mature in him. We pray to him. We get better. We read the Bible. We repent of our sins and we begin, we begin to live for him. And when we mess up, we look to him, God, I messed up. Help me in this area. 
You don't give up on your own children when they mess up. You try to teach them the right way. But they are still your child. They are still your flesh and blood. It's still in Christ. We are in the blood of Jesus. We are covered by the blood. I'm going to leave a link to a... Um, uh, so you can um, find some salvation prayers. Matter of fact, I'll probably make a Pinterest board for that and leave it in the um, the description section of the video. But please don't say, I'm not chosen. Oh, God just loved them and he don't love me. He liked them and he don't love me. So let's go through some scriptures because I was, I was led as I was reading this to look in my Dake reference Bible. Now, this is an annotated reference Bible. Oops. Okay, I'm going to put this here. This is an annotated reference Bible. And I'm going to read something from here because it was so helpful when I read this. Talking about chosen. Because those of us that have given our life to Jesus Christ, we can declare we're chosen. But what about if somebody says, well, I don't know Jesus. I didn't give my life to Jesus. I'm not chosen. Oh, God just choose certain people. He don't care about everybody. That is a lie straight from the pit. And that is a theology that goes around. And I'm, I'm learning. If you're not in the word, it can be so confusing. And you know what? I will honestly say too, even being in the word, I... And reading the word and studying the word, I cannot say that I fully understand everything. I've we we I cannot say that I've cornered the mark the market on every principle of God. And it's okay. What's important is that we're pressing forth to the high calling in Christ Jesus, that we're continually studying. And seeking God's face. He says, seek his face forevermore. And God, he he's like, look at my look at look at my look at my child just studying. Making mistakes, getting up, studying. I got this, God says. You don't got this. I got this. And then we could declare, I got this through Christ Jesus. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But in and of myself, I don't got this. I got this because Jesus got this. So, look. Okay. So, look at first. Okay. Look at this. Well, listen to this. But you can look at it too because I have it in the camera. Let me make sure I'm in frame. Yes. Okay. So, um, when I read, read Ephesians 1, 4 in this Dake annotated reference Bible, it, 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 um, when I read, um, when I read Ephesians 1, 4 in this Dake reference Bible, it led me to go to page 372 because this has a lot of references. You can see. It refers you to a lot, um, scripture-wise and notes and everything. So, it says God's choice. This is what God chose before the overthrow of Lucifer's world. That all of the new race of Adam who accept Jesus Christ should be holy and without blame before him in love. It is, it is this plan that is chosen for all believers, not the individual conformity of any one person to that plan. The final choice is left up to the individual and not to God. All are called and chosen to become holy people before God. In love, if they want to accept this plan and choice of God, but only those who meet the conditions will be so blessed. Now, there are scriptures that the author wrote after this to confirm this thought that, okay, God has what he said here called and chosen to become holy before God. There's a scripture that says many are called but few are chosen. So that can be used to discount other people and say, okay, many are called and few are chosen. But what I, after reading several scriptures, which we will get into, I realized that I need further understanding of that scripture. 
I cannot use that scripture to eliminate any human being from salvation. That scripture has to mean something more. Because it's saying that if I take that scripture as many are called and few are chosen, as that God did not want every human being to have, that only a few people are chosen to serve God, I would have to say that Jesus... I would have to say that Jesus does not offer salvation to everyone. Then that would make God cruel. Because that means that God are going to send people to hell. But he didn't offer them salvation. He didn't choose them to be saved. So that scripture cannot mean that God don't want everyone to be saved. Many are called and few are chosen. You're not predestined by God. I've learned, I don't understand that predestination scripture very well. And this is why I want to study. But I know this much, Jesus died for humanity. So whether I could fully under explain predestination to someone, that might be a theological topic. What's more important is that people understand that Jesus loves if they give their life to Jesus Christ. All the other stuff, we can, I can study that. You know, as God leads me and get further, under, get deeper understanding. But I'm grateful for, I believe, what's the most important is that Jesus saves. And that he called everyone. It says, come, 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 come drink of the water of life freely. All that thirst, come. The scripture says that. Anyone that comes to Jesus, he will, and God, Jesus said, anyone that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Oh, get out of here. You're not chosen. If somebody's saying, Jesus, uh, can you accept me? I, let me tell you something. I heard some, there were some people preaching on the corner. They were not Christian. You know, I don't want to go into no religious ba religion bashing, but it was false. I will say that. Do you know that when this person, they were calling Caucasians devils? I just, I knew it was the Holy Spirit because I went up to this person, these group of people, men, and I said, excuse me, I hear that you're calling Caucasian people devils. I said, let me ask you a question. What if, okay, you want to say that, what if a white person went to Jesus and asked Jesus to, to forgive them and be their Lord and Savior? What would Jesus say? He said, they said he will not accept them. I said, let me get, I said, that's not, matter of fact, I, I, I believe I said that's not true. They wanted to get into some debate. I said, that is not true. God is love. And if someone comes to him, he will in no wise cast out. But see, this is why we have to be in the word. Many are called and few are chosen. We have to understand that scripture. Because if we use that scripture out of context and we fully don't understand it, we can mess people up. Well, Jesus ain't going to choose me. I ain't going to ask Jesus to come to my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. Now, I could be mistaken, but I believe with that scripture, many are called and few, many are called, but few are chosen for those spiritual blessings. Yes, upon them meeting the requirements, which is to accept Jesus Christ. You cannot have the spiritual blessings of God if you have not accepted him. But he's chosen. He's called. Ultimately, the first choice is sending Jesus Christ to die for humanity. Now, let's look at some scriptures. And this is what truly, truly, truly blessed my heart. And I said, okay, God, yeah, I do need more understanding of that scripture. Many are called, few are chosen. Because that's not discounting salvation for anyone. So let's look at some scriptures. John 3, 16. Let's look at this. For chosen, right? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world... That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. 
shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm sorry, y'all. Keep going. So, so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever is open to all. 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So I'm going to stop right there. Whosoever believeth in him. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The ones that don't believe in Jesus Christ, who reject him, they are condemned and they will not have all the spiritual blessings because they have not, they have chosen not to choose the one that chose them. God says, what well, he said, I did not choose, you did not choose me. I chose you. God did the choosing first. The ultimate choice, again, was to save humanity. God made a deliberate choice to send his son, Jesus Christ, to die for the pardoning of our sins. To die for our sins that we may have forgiveness through Jesus Christ for our sins. We got to study that scripture. Many are called, but few are chosen. God, God knows who's going to say yes, but he is not an unjust God. He's given everyone an opportunity. So to say that, oh, God did not choose you is to say that God is unjust and that he's going to send people to hell for no reason and it was not even their fault. No. We can make a choice to go with his ultimate choice. Amen. Okay, so there must be a lot of um people traveling. I gotta see this in a more positive way. And Lord bless them and make they let them make their appointed round safely in the name of Jesus. Okay, so Mark 16. Let's go to Mark 16. And we're going to read verses 15 through 16. And G it says, and he said, matter of fact, I'm going to read from verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, this is right here. Verse, well, I, um, the focus, ver focus verse. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. It's to every creature. God is not, not casting someone out. He's there with open arms and saying, Come. Come, you hear the gospel, come. I did the ultimate, I made the ultimate sacrifice. I made my choice. I decided to send my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins. I want you. I prefer you. I love you. Right? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So, here we go. All spiritual blessings chosen, but you have to receive that blessing. You have to receive this chosenness, for lack of a better words. You have to receive the one that chose you. 
but he wants you to partake of those spiritual blessings. But this is what he has done for us. And as we go further on in the text, we will see, and even reading throughout the Bible, all those that say yes to Jesus Christ, all the spiritual blessings that we have. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2, 4. And again, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've cornered the market on all of this and have full understanding. But I know I have some understanding. Whomsoever will, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Let's look at 1 Timothy, and um, I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, and then on to 6. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead quiet and peaceable, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life, in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Who will have all men to be saved. There we go. I could stop right there. And that could just discredit the whole premise. That God only wants some people. I No. It's just that. Some people will not choose Jesus. We have to make a choice. Now the Holy Spirit shows up. He convicts us of sin. But if a person loves darkness more than they love light, then they may choose to reject Jesus Christ. And to be honest with you, I, I still want to learn more about that because I don't take glory for accepting God. I give him the glory. I'm, I'm grateful that I said yes to Jesus. Because my heart could be so hardened. And that's why some people say, oh, God hardened their heart, whatever. I mean, that's another topic altogether. But I know one thing. He wants all men to be saved. And I have to come to the conclusion, look, I just don't understand everything. Because it will look like scripture is contradicting itself, but it's not. It's just that we don't have full understanding. We're not infinite. We're finite. God is the only one that knows and understands everything. And it is up to him whether he wants to reveal certain things to him or not, to us or not. We can ask him. But I believe, and I'm saying this, and I hope I don't sound harsh, harsh when I say this, but we have to humble ourselves before God. Sometimes we can be so haughty. And I'm not even speaking about anyone that's watching because I don't know your where you are as far as pride is concerned and humility. But I say that as, uh, I'm saying this in a general sense, as human beings, God forgive us. We can't assume to know everything. And it's okay to say, God, I don't fully understand this, but I know that you died for everybody's sins. I know that you love everyone. You love humanity. You don't love the sin, but you love the sinner. And you want us to go and preach the gospel so people could give their life to Jesus Christ, tell them the good news of Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins, and we can have forgiveness or relationship with God and go to heaven. I may not understand fully all the other stuff. I may not be very well versed. But there's some people that are very, very well versed when it comes to all this theology stuff. And believe me, they have not said yes to Jesus because they just studied the Bible. Maybe in some school or whatever or to use it for, 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 for filthy lucre's sake. But if I could point somebody to Jesus Christ for the pardoning of their sins, for salvation, 
I know that God is pleased with that. And that I'm living it. But all the other theology stuff, not saying that it's wrong to study it. Not saying that, you know, we should not know. With all our with all your under, with all your getting, get understanding. But with all of that getting, I just pray that we don't lose what's most important. And we because uh, the Bible says knowledge puffs up, but love covers. So it's nothing wrong with studying the, um, theology. But the main thing is the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has chosen. We are chosen. That's one of his spiritual blessings. And if you listen to this and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, that could be your spiritual blessings. All the stuff that's includes, that comes in that fake salvation package. That's for all believers. But there's the first spiritual blessing knocking at the door. Jesus Christ is knocking. Let me in. Right? But look at that. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. And men. The man Jesus Christ. So God, for there is one God and one mediator, mediator between God and men. The man Jesus Christ. So here's Jesus Christ between God and man. He made a way. He's the bridge. He's the gate. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. But looking at verse 4, looking at verse 3 again to four, verse 4, for, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Talking about praying for all the kings and praying for all men. Praying for all those in authority. God say this is good because why? This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Now, will all men be saved? No, because they will make a choice not to choose the choice, the chosen one, the one that chose them, the one that chose us. They made a choice. God says what? Choose what? In Joshua, they, they had to choose. Remember, Joshua said, I set before you what death and life. Choose life that your whole household may live. Okay, that's an Old Testament scripture. And that's an Old Testament scripture in a different context, yes. But in the New Testament, we can see it's just saying whomsoever will. It's still, we're presented with a choice. Of course, yes, that's a different context. But here, God, it. In the New Testament, and with when you read the Gospels and you read the Epistles, it's clearly that that we have to make a choice. We can choose Jesus, or we can choose the world. But He has chosen us. Make no mistake of it. He made the ultimate choice, deliberate choice, to send His Son Jesus Christ to die for us on the sins, to die, to die for us on the cross for our sins. Sorry about that. Yeah, so let's go on to, oh, matter of fact, let me read on. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. He gave himself a ransom for all. I have to study. Many are called, but few are chosen. I don't fully understand that because when I read these scriptures, I can really see. That God loves all men. He wants all to be saved. No matter your color. No matter your creed. No matter your nationality. It doesn't matter. Last two scriptures. Um, let's read um, 2 Peter 3. 9. Okay. Okay. So in this book, in this chapter, Peter is sharing how some some will go scoffing about about the coming of Christ, saying, you know, where's this promise of his coming? You can read all of chapter three if you would like on your own time. But then he is um, encouraging and um, the reader, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. 
talking about his promise of is of God of Jesus is coming. Cause you know how some people say, Oh, they say he coming, but he ain't come yet. He ain't never coming. You know, and you think about a life situation where it's like, oh, they say they're gonna do that, but oh, she said if I do that, I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm not gonna get in trouble. Or, you know, it's like saying, like, oh, okay, their promise is not yay. And then sometimes it's not, right? But God is not slack concerning the promise of his coming. A day is like a thousand years or a thousand years is like a day in the Lord. So God's timing, the way that we compute time, oh, this is 30 minutes and we have our clock. God could be like, that ain't even a minute. That's a quarter of a minute, not even a quarter of a minute. It could be one billionth of a, of a min, minute, our, our 30 minutes. So God is not on our timetable, but these scoffers, these scoffers, that's what they thought. And so they were saying God is slack concerning his promise, the promise of Jesus is coming. Where is the coming of Jesus? Again, you can read 2 Peter 3, all of it on your own time. It says the Lord is not slack, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God doesn't want anyone to perish. And I'm I'm if I'm not mistaken, please don't quote me on this. I believe I read a scripture that says that um that something about him coming back when this when this um gospel is preached throughout the world. God knows that. <laughs> He knows when it's time for him to come back. Where there won't be no excuses for those that could have said yes. Now I'm not because if it's a person that is um in intellectual disabled or whatever, they don't have their mental faculties and stuff like that, and they can't make a deliberate choice, God understands that with them. And I don't think we need to be veering into that. Because if a person is they can't make a decision for whatever reason brain wise or whatever that's that's god's don't that's a something on a deeper level that's not something that we you know as human beings could really fully understand the depth 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 of like god can right but the thing is that god is not willing for any to perish anybody that we see we god don't want that person to perish now, I'm going to be honest with you. That is not an easy pill for, for me to swallow at times. Especially when somebody is constantly doing something wrong to me and I know they're being wicked. I know they don't mean me no good. But I have to look them in their face, walk in the love of God with them, and meanwhile, they're trying to tear me down. But to look at them and see them through God's eyes and say, God loves this one. And he died for them. He chose them for him, for them to choose him. Meaning, he made the ultimate choice to send Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So, salvation is available to them. God loves them. He don't want them to perish. And it's okay to want justice, but justice is different from revenge, right? So, I want to stop here and say something for a moment. So, yes, one of the spiritual blessings is being chosen, right? But I really wanted to address those that may be watching and they are like, I'm not chosen. Because they may think this, all that God has is not available to him, to them. And in Berean chat today, I believe God wanted me to encourage us as believers that we are chosen. Saying yes to Jesus Christ, believe me. It's a spiritual blessing that he, and, and that he said, I want you. That's a spiritual blessing. 
Additionally, I believe he wanted me to address the concept of chosen and for those that have not said yes to Jesus to get some understanding that he made the ultimate choice to die on the cross for their sins. And they too can be in the body of Christ. They too can enjoy all of the manifold blessings of God. So I can see that this video is twofold. And to be honest with you, even though I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I know I'm chosen of God, I'm being so blessed even more and edified in this to and encouraged to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Right? So, again, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Will they? No. Because some people will reject that this offer of Jesus Christ, but let that not be you, beloved. Last scripture, but not the least, we're going to go to Revelations twenty two seventeen, And it reads, and the spirit, so let me go back for a second. This is John and um, he's sharing, he's been exiled to Patmos. You can read the book of Revelation and get further understanding of this if you want. And he's just sharing about the part where it says Jesus will come quickly, right? And then what Jesus said to him and then he's sharing, right? So now in verse 17, he said, he wrote, and the spirit and the bride say, come. You repeat her people say, come, Lord Jesus. And let him that hear him say, come. Come, Lord Jesus. And let him. Okay, and let me read it again. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Oh, hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus. And let them hear him say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. He's saying come. He will in no wise cast anyone out. He will not cast you out. And it reads, And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. You don't have to pay for salvation. You do not have to pay God, we can't pay him. We can't earn this. It's freely. Come, Lord Jesus. This is free. He says, come. We say to him, come. He say, come. It's this love exchange. So with that being said, I thank God that one of the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus is that he has chosen us. Everything else after that is for the believer, right? It's for the believer. There's so many spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. There's so many holistic blessings in Christ Jesus. Whomsoever will can choose Jesus, can choose all spiritual blessings. But he made the first choice. And I pray those that are listening will choose him as he has chosen them. He has chosen us. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, you can leave it in the description section. Um, I want to humble myself and say that I don't understand everything. I am growing. I am learning. If I've erred in some way, you can lovingly leave a comment or correction. And um, 
you know, verses for me to study um, in the for the Berean chat and, uh, you know, um, so I can do some further research and study um, based upon something you may have seen that I got incorrect or whatever. And, um, yeah, and then let it be um, a loving dialogue. A chat is a dialogue. I know I'm the only one talking on the video. However, in the comment section, um, there could be um, some dialogue um, in a healthy, loving, godly way. Because we're all growing um, in the Lord. And um, that loves the Lord. That accepts the Lord. And there are people too that probably want to know about the Lord. Want to give their life to the Lord. Or maybe baby Christians and stuff. And so we want to make sure that um, it's done in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. And that will not um, damage the soul or wound the spirit of any soul. So we thank you Lord. And Father God, thank you for your word. 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 Thank you for the empowerment to live your word. To live your word. To live your word. To live your word. We worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you, Lord, that you will um, guard this word in our heart. That we will not be loose from it. And, um... It will bring forth the, the 90-fold, 100-fold. I may be I'm quoting that scripture wrong. God, I'm sorry. But you know, Lord, bring forth the fruit unto you that you desire from your word. And we thank you, Lord God. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that being said, beloved, I want to say thanks for watching. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.